Bikini Bottom Genetics. So scientists at Bikini Bottom have been investigating the genetic makeup of the organisms in the community. Use the information provided and your knowledge of genetics to answer each question. For each genotype below, indicate whether it is heterozygous or homozygous. All right, so the first thing that I would do is I would identify what the term or vocabulary heterozygous and the term homozygous means. And so heterozygous, I would highlight hetero, means different. And homo means the same. So if I see two different size letters, meaning a capital and a lower, I'll know that that is heterozygous. Or if I see two letters that are of the same size, I will know that that is homo or homozygous. First one, capital T, capital T. Because those are the same size, I know that those are homozygous. Capital B, lowercase b. Because those are two different sizes, I know that that, that that is heterozygous. Let's try this one over here. Lowercase t, lowercase t. Those are the same size letters, so th that would be homozygous. Capital T, lowercase t, two different size letters, that would be heterozygous. Remember, heterozygous means different, homozygous means the same. I'm going to leave those others for you to do on your own. Which of the phenotypes in number one would be considered purebred? So going back to our vocabulary, we know that a purebred is homozygous. Homozygous and purebred are used interchangeably. So I would go up and I would identify the genotypes that are homozygous. Capital T, capital T would be homozygous. Capital D, capital T would be homozygous. Lowercase t, lowercase t would be homozygous. Which of the genotypes in number one would be hybrids? Going back to our vocabulary, we know that hybrids <coughs> is used interchangeably with heterozygous. Heterozygous means different meaning the two sizes of lettering is different, so you'll have a capital and a lowercase. Going back up to the ones that we worked, we know that capital B and lowercase b was heterozygous. Capital T, lowercase t was heterozygous. Number two, determine the phenotype. Oh, and I'm sorry, going back up to number one. Once you've completed these spots here, they would also, you would uh, also bring them down to the purebred and hybrid, but I wanna leave some for you to do. Number two, determine the phenotype for each genotype using the information provided about SpongeBob. Well, we know that phenotype is our physical characteristics. So that's what we can see with our own eyes. They have brown hair, they have blonde hair, they have blue eyes, they have brown eyes. Those are phenotypes. Whereas our genotypes are the lettering or genes that are expressed on the allele. Yellow body color is dominant to blue. And so we know that blue is a recessive trait. The only way for a recessive trait to show is if we have two lowercase letters. So I'm just going to do a little example, two lowercase. Now I can solve my problems. Capital Y, capital Y. Uppercase indicates dominance. And so we know that he's going to have a yellow body. Capital Y, lowercase y. So although that recessive trait is being, is being um, expressed on the gene, we also have the dominant trait. 
Anytime we have a dominant trait expressed, we know that that's the physical characteristic that's going to be, um, be expressed by the organism. So we will have yellow. Lowercase y, lowercase y. These are recessive traits. And because they are both recessive, we know that that recessive trait is going to show. Now you try to fill in square shape dominant to round shape. Number three, for each phenotype, give the genotype that are possible for Patrick. A tall head, capital T, is dominant to short T. So we know that short T is recessive and capital T is dominant. All right, so capital, or I'm sorry, uh, for tall. The only way to get the dominant trait is if we have capital letters expressed in the genotype. And so I know that capital T, capital T, will give us a tall organism. I also know that capital T, lowercase t, will also give us a tall organism. Short. In order to be short, you must not have any dominant traits being expressed. Moving up to this problem or to the directions here, it says short lowercase t is um, or lowercase t is for short. We must have two alleles, lowercase, in order for that trait to be expressed. And you try pink body, yellow body. Number four, SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Susie Round Pants at a dance. SpongeBob is heterozygous for his sh uh, square shape but Sponge Susie is round. Create a Punnett square to show the possibilities that would result if SpongeBob and Sponge Susie had children. Hint, read question two. So first I'm going to identify all my vocabulary words and what they mean. So heterozygous means different. And Okay, so now it says go back up to number two. Determine the uh, physical or phenotype for each genotype using the information provided about SpongeBob. So we are looking at their shape, either squ uh, square or round. All right, so it says SpongeBob is heterozygous. We know that by heterozygous, that means different, so he should have a capital letter and a lowercase letter. If we stick to the lettering that they use in number two, then we're going to use S's. Heterozygous, large, small. So SpongeBob is going to have a capital letter and a lowercase letter. We also see that Sponge Susie is round. The only way to get that recessive trait is if both letters are lowercase and recessive. So Sponge Susie will have two lowercase s's. We're going to fill in the Punnett square. We bring the uppercase s down. Remember, uppercase always goes before lowercase. And we bring the lowercase s over. Moving on to our next box, we bring the lowercase s down and the lowercase s over. Moving to our third box, we'll bring the uppercase s down and the lowercase s over. And our last box, we'll bring two lowercase uh, letters in the box, one from up and one from the side. It says list the possible genotypes and phenotypes for their children. Well, we know that genotypes is what's on the genes, and phenotypes is the physical appearance we see, or the physical trait that is expressed. And so the possible genotypes we can get from the Punnett square. There's only two possibilities, heterozygous, uppercase, lowercase, 
or homozygous recessive, two lower cases. The possible phenotypes or physical appearance would be square, which is dominant, to round, which is recessive. So what are the chances of the child with a square shape? We're not going to do ratios, we're only going to do percentages. Going back to our Punnett square, we know that a complete Punnett square is worth 100%. 100 divided by the four squares is 25%. Each square within the Punnett square is 25%. What are the chances of a child with a square shape? Square is our dominant trait. Anything or any um, gene expressed with the dominant trait will, um, I said that completely wrong, anytime you see the capital letter or the dominant trait, that uh, physical characteristics, char characteristic will be expressed. And so in two of the boxes we have capital letters. The chance that we'll have a child or an offspring that is square is 50%. What are the chances of a child with a round shape? We go back. We need to identify the squares that have only recessive traits because the round shape is recessive and there are two for 50%. I'll finish um, calculating all of the Punnett squares and answering the questions, and I will post it to um, the Harry Potter PowerPoint so that you can check all of your answers. Before I log off, though, I wanted to go ahead and flip the page over and just work a couple problems from the top of the page. So we're now on Bikini Bottom Genetics 2. Use your knowledge of genetics to complete this worksheet. Use the information for SpongeBob's traits to write the phenotype, the physical appearance for each item. So they've already identified that phenotype means physical appearance for us. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to use these genotypes to look at the graphic organizer to identify the phenotypes. Capital L, capital L. So if I go to the graphic organizer and I look for an L, I have found that L is the nose style. A capital L means a long nose, and a lowercase l is a stubby nose. Capital L, capital le L. Capital letter indicates dominance, and that any time a dominant gene is, is shown, that is the phenotype that will be expressed. So we will have a long nose. Let's do this one right here, capital R, lowercase r. If we go back to our graphic organizer and locate the R, capital letter R is dominant for round, and lowercase r is recessive for oval, and we're discussing eye shape. But again, any time a dominant trait is shown on the gene, we are going to express that dominant trait within our physical appearance or our phenotype. And so again, we're going to have the dominant trait shown for round. And we're going to do one more. Let's go ahead and do B for lowercase y, lowercase y. Go over to the graphic organizer and I'll locate the y. We're discussing body color. Uppercase y is yellow, dominant. Lowercase uh, y is blue, recessive. <clears throat> For this problem, we have two lowercase letters. <clears throat> the only way for a, for a recessive gene to show is if there's no dominant gene shown. And so we know that we will see this recessive trait on our phenotype. All right, guys, if you have any more questions, uh, leave me a message on Remind.